Hi everyone and welcome to the video on ionic and molecular solids. This video is just going to continue the series of videos all about the different types of solids and their properties. Ionic and molecular solids are in sections 12.5 and 12.6 in your textbook. So ionic solids are held together by the attraction between the cations and the anions. All ionic compounds are solids, so whether you have sodium chloride, cesium chloride, calcium chloride, um, calcium oxide, right? all ionic compounds are solids. They all have a cation and an anion. And again, they're held by the attraction between these ions, um, which is an ionic bond. So ionic solids are held together by ionic bonds. Um, the high melting and boiling points of ionic compounds just show how strong that ionic bond is. Um, in terms of the strength of the ionic bond, uh, remember that the ionic bond is stronger with higher charges and smaller sizes. So the higher the charge, so plus two minus two versus plus one minus one, and the smaller the, the um, ions are, the stronger the bond, right? If the nuclei are very, very close together, um, then you're gonna have a stronger ionic bond. Um, for example, magnesium oxide, MgO, melts at 2,852 degrees Celsius, where sodium chloride, which is plus one and minus one, melts at 801 degrees Celsius. So magnesium oxide um, has higher charges and the ions are smaller, and so it has a higher melting point because that ionic bond um, is stronger. So if you remember Coulomb's law, this gives us the lattice energy, uh, but this also helps us determine the strength of the ionic bond. Um, ionic solids tend to have structures that are symmetric, um, and you want the arrangement of the ions to be close together, but the most favorable structures are those that are gonna have maximum cation uh, anion distances, or I should say minimum. You want the, the cations and the anions to be as close together as possible, but you want the cation cation and anion anion differences to be maximized. So again, you want the cation anion to be as close as possible. You want those to attract, but you want like charges to be as far apart as possible. And so if you take a look at this, this is uh, copper oxide, CuO, so notice the oxygens are on the corners of the crystal lattice in the center, and then the copper ions are as far apart as possible, but they're as close to the O's as possible. So in terms of properties of ionic solids, um, they have a pretty low vapor pressure, and that's because the ionic bonds are very strong, and so it's much harder to overcome the ionic bond in order to exert a vapor pressure. So low vapor pressure, ionic solids tend to be brittle. Um, and the reason that they tend to be brittle, that means that they, they break when you try to bend them, um, that's because if a stress is applied to the ionic solid, um, the layers of the ionic solid will shift. So what's gonna happen is the alignment ends up becoming cation next to cation and anion next to anion. And because of that shift, and those like charges, they're going to be, um, there's going to be repulsive forces, so it's gonna to want to push them apart. And so the this resulting repulsion causes the layers to shift away from each other and tends to um, break the ionic solid. Um, they do not conduct electricity as a solid. So because the valence electrons in the ionic compounds are confined to just the anion, um, they're not able to move around the solid. Um, typically, they're insulators, so they do not conduct electricity except when it's molten. So molten just means that you melt the solid or dissolved in solution. Because if you put the ionic solid, if you dissolve it into solution, you now have ions, which allows for free flowing of, of the electrons um, and of the ions. And then, as I said before, ionic solids have very high melting and boiling points um, because they have strong columbic attraction um, and ionic solids typically exist as crystals. So the next type of solid that we're going to look at are molecular solids and the reason that I put ionic and molecular solids with each other is because we go from ionic compounds to covalent compounds. So um, 
With ionic solids, we focus simply on the um, cation anion attraction. Now with the molecular solids, we're going to focus on um, all nonmetals. So molecular solids consist of nonmetal elements or nonmetal compounds. Um, and the molecules themselves consist of covalent bonds. Um, so the molecules are held together with covalent bonds. So they could either be atoms or neutral molecules. Um, and the molecules themselves then are held together by intramolecular forces. So these are pretty weak forces. You can have, you can have dispersion, dipole-dipole, or hydrogen bonding. Um, and the molecular solids are really the weakest solids um, that we're going to look at simply because they are held together by these intramolecular forces. So with the properties of molecular solids, um, they are not electrical conductors um, and that's because the electrons are held in the covalent bonds so because the electrons are shared and they're held in place there's no way for them to move around so they cannot conduct electricity um, they have pretty low melting points okay that's because they're held together by intermolecular forces and because these intermolecular forces are weak um, the melting points or the boiling points are very low it doesn't take very much energy to overcome that um, most molecular solids actually have a melting point um, below 200 degrees Celsius, which it sounds high, but that's actually a pretty low melting point. Um, in terms of other properties, um, they tend to depend on the strength of the forces that are holding the molecules together. So if they're being held together with hydrogen bonds, then they might have a little bit different properties than if the molecules are held together by dispersion forces. Um, some other properties as well, molecular solids tend to be so, um, pretty soft just because it doesn't take much to overcome the intermolecular forces so it's pretty easy for, for it to be a little softer. Um, and there are many biologically and really commercially important uh, molecular solids. So sucrose, which is sugar, um, I mean that's important not only for us but also for plants. Um, and then polymers that I talked about in the first video. Um, polymers are simply molecules that are made of uh, chains of smaller molecules. So nylon, uh, PVC, styrofoam, those are all polymers that are pretty important um, in everyday life and, and really in the, the science industry.